In the midst of a housing crisis that dominated the general election earlier this year and in a country with tens of thousands of homeless people, Dublin City Council rejected a plan to build 850 new homes in Coolock, which would have cost the taxpayers basically nothing. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Grip the Media. This week, Dublin City Council was presented with a plan to build 850 new homes in Coolock. Under the proposal, 250 of these would have been social housing and the houses would have been built with private capital, meaning that it would cost the taxpayer almost nil. I think you'll agree that sounds like a pretty good deal. Now, Irish politicians have been shouting and roaring about housing for several years at this stage, so naturally you'd assume that this would have been a welcome development, right? Well, think again. As the journal.ie wrote, Dublin City Councillors have rejected controversial plans to build 853 new homes on the Oscar Trainer road site in Coolock. In a motion on the plans this evening, councillors voted by 48 votes to 14 against, allowing the development on a 17 hectare site at the junction of the Port Tunnel and Oscar Trainer Road to go ahead. So why was this plan, quote, controversial? Well, apparently the crux of the issue is that only 250 of the over 800 homes were to be used for social housing, and left-wing politicians on the council, true to form, wanted the plan stopped so that every single one of them could be social housing, built with public funds. Many councillors object to the construction of 50% private housing along with 30% social and 20% affordable purchase units on the state-owned site at Oscar Trainer Road, Coolock. They want the city council to take over the development to ensure that it is kept out of the private market. Now this is the crucial bit. Council planners stated in a report that the city council does not have the expertise for such a development, adding that the council is not a developer or a construction contractor. And so, when presented with a choice between 250 social housing units and no social housing units at all, Dublin's politicians chose the second one. They deliberately rejected a total of 850 houses to suit their political agenda. Of course, it is not just social housing that the city has lost out on. There are plenty of young wage earners in the capital who have been diligently saving for a deposit and dreaming of their own home, who have apparently just been told to go and take a running jump by the combined genius of Labour, the Social Democrats, Sinn Féin and the Greens. Some critics of the development have said that while Dublin City Council may not be a developer, it can bring in construction contractors to build these homes as it did in the past. But we're being told that the need for housing is urgent, so why haven't councillors fast-tracked builds if they feel the council should be the builders? Is it because shouting and roaring about the lack of housing is a good vote-getting tactic, but actually building homes is a completely different challenge? Now, let's leave aside for the moment the fact that Dublin City Council lacks the expertise or the money to build 853 homes by itself and focus instead on the demand that all homes be social housing. For starters, not everybody wants to live in social housing. In fact, some would argue that mixed housing is more likely to avoid clusters of deprivation. Lots of council estates had great communities, but most people wanted to own their own home. This vote isn't just an attack on common sense, therefore, but an attack on the concept of private housing itself. Our socialist leaders and left-wing elected representatives don't actually want people to be able to purchase their own home. They'd much rather if people just resign themselves to a lifetime on a social housing list somewhere where they are at the mercy of politicians who get to decide who does and who does not get a house. Secondly, the whole benefit of building private and social housing in the same development is that the private homes pay for the cost of the social housing. By the time you've paid for the construction materials, labour and furnishings, remember social housing has to come furnished, the cost of building these homes will run into the tens of millions. So the city council had a private developer ready to take on that risk and they rejected it purely out of hatred of the private sector. Their vote against the plans won't only cost people a chance to own a home, it will also cost all the jobs that would have been generated by building them and the tax revenue generated from selling them. And what has the country and the capital city gained by all this? Well, absolutely nothing. But then again, what do we expect? 
The average lefty councillor in Dublin is about as much of an expert in the housing market and economics as I am an astronaut. They're bureaucrats who care more about waving the Palestinian flag and making us all use proper gender pronouns than they do about the aspirations of young people in Dublin who might want to own a home one day. This whole episode perfectly sums up the political left in this country. All about feelings and image and looking trendy and whining about a problem like housing, but practical solutions be damned. They'd rather let houses slip through their fingers than concede any ground to the private sector. It doesn't matter to them what happens as long as they're on the side of the cause du jour. Please like and share this video and as always if you enjoyed it please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.